I believe that God should be feared. I fear God. Mm -hmm. It's one of the only things I fear. And I believe that also you see God to a degree or you see religion how you see yourself. And I see myself as a person of strong principles and strong morals. And I like to think of myself as the kind of person nobody really wants to cross, not because I'm a psycho, but because I'm a man of capability and I'm smart and I'm strong and nobody wants to make an enemy of me. So I feel like I find an affinity to a belief system which has very similar outlooks. And there's a whole bunch of other things I can say from the Quran and Islamic texts, etc. But to keep it very vague and very broad for people who are not Islamic, I felt God when I was in an Islamic country. If I went to an Islamic country, the problem. I the felt West, God. West you don't feel any God. How is it a Christian country if Satanists are mocking Jesus on the streets? I, uh, I, I understand what you're saying. And I, I was trying to gather in my head what made him pulled him away from Christianity. And I said, it's probably the example. If you're thinking that America is a Christian country and you're thinking that the United Kingdom is a Christian country, country they're not, they're and you're not. going, Christianity is getting it wrong. Yeah. And the truth is that America is no longer a Christian country. We're being run by people that are satanic. Hollywood is satanic and right. Hollywood is running America. Right. So you're not wrong. But I think that right now America is facing a spiritual battle. And for yeah. the first time, in a very long time, Christians are starting to stand up and speak about our principles. I hope so. And, and I could have used you <laughs> as, as a I, I, I know. Christian. But I, I have seen in California, I've seen Christians and Muslims get side by side when they were complaining about the LGBT I did see that schools, which recently. is fantastic. And I know what you're saying, and that is true. But it's almost like when I go to an Islamic country, I feel God around. I, you see it. You see it in the way the, the people are dressed. You see it in the fact that everyone's in a family. You see it in the fact that there's a mosque on every corner. It's in the air. And it's almost like when I'm in Dubai and I'm talking to my friends, my Islamic friends, and I explain to them the things you have to protect your child from in an American school, they, they literally think I'm lying. They're like, no, surely. Like, th it's what mind Africa, bending to what them. What about African countries that are Christian? Okay, so yeah, this is interesting. So yeah, they still are mind blown by the concept of what we're fighting in America. So America is unique. We shouldn't say that this is the you're right. blanket. You're right. They're right. There are Christian countries which still take Christianity. And they're like, what seriously. do you mean men can be women? Like they think you're crazy. And we're in Romania. And Romania is a country which is Christian. very conservative and very Christian. Very Christian. And they don't buy into any of this garbage no, either. None of it. So this is absolutely not really true. It's unfair to say all Christian countries are like America that. is an exception and not not in a good way. Yeah, I think they're like the whole West is, unfortunately. The West, like, the West is, I, I've said on my show the entire time, the West is falling. The fact that we're even having these debates is, yeah. is not good. Yeah, the West has fallen and unfortunately- Russia, yeah. Christian country. Yeah, absolutely, a very Christian country. So yeah, you're, you are right. But I've, I felt an affinity to Islam. I felt God in the air and it's, it's difficult for me to explain any other way. Okay, that's fair enough. I, I, I won't push you any further on that. All right, let's get to your case that's happening today. So, and, and why conservatives are screaming about it in America yeah. and why they feel that Tucker didn't push you enough on this case. Push me. Okay, so first and foremost, one thing I want to clarify for people that are watching this is that there seems to be this understanding that you are being prosecuted or you're being indicted rather for human sex trafficking charges. I've read the indictment and I do want to make it clear. The words human sex trafficking occur on the indictment, but then it very makes it very clear that what they're referring to is they've kind of extended the term. It's not what we think about in America when you think of a bunch of children being put into yeah. a truck and taken over the border against their will. They're basically saying that if you, if you trick a woman into coming into a country by using the lover boy method, then they consider that to be human sex trafficking. So the definition has definitely expanded over time. Well, it's also ridiculously misogynistic to believe that women can't make their own decisions on anything. So the whole thing about it is misogynistic. But yeah, you're correct. That's a very important distinction. Essentially what they're saying is we have a show in America called 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. That is the lover boy method is women yeah. that, <laughs> that go over to the US. Yeah. They're clearly coming for citizenship, but these women kind of get duped and they get, they sponsor these people. Yep. This would be the same vein of what they're trying to describe. I've read it myself of what human sex trafficking can be, which is oh, it's an a woman reach. fell for you, fell in love, moved over here overseas, but it's only because you were very convincing. Yeah, That is the definition given in the indictment of what they're referring to. Correct. So I, I'll give a very quick rundown on the case. Everything from these old videos, old clips, my webcam company, things that happened 10 years ago have absolutely nothing to do with the Correct. case. Absolutely zero. Anything you see from before 2021 has nothing to do with the case. The case against me is that from 2021, my brother and I, when we were already worth hundreds of millions of dollars and already successful and famous, created an organized criminal group. And our intention was to convince women to move to Romania to make TikTok videos so we could steal the TikTok money. 
and TikTok, and they mention OnlyFans. Correct. On the indictment page. And they say that you did this using the lover boy method. Yeah. And it almost reads, what's interesting to me and why I was compelled by this case is just that because they tremendously changed it. When they were investigating you, we were told that there was a woman who went to the UN who escaped yep. the, your grip and that, you know, she said, I've been held captive. Yep. And then after they investigated, they came up with what it sounded like regurgitated Andrew Tate videos. Yep. The lover boy method, which is in one of your videos where, where you're talking about women. So it, it seems like during that time where they held you in the cell, perhaps the initial case that they fed to the media fell apart. Yeah, I believe what happened, and I have to be very careful what I say, but what I believe happened is in April of last year, Tristan and I had some visitors here from America who were only in the country for five days, made some very strange demands financially. When they were rejected, they called the American embassy and said right. they had been kidnapped. Those two women, we deem now to be professionals. One of them has accused seven men of kidnapping in her life. And she's also lawyered up instantly from a left-wing NGO because she's currently being sued by us for false charges. And she seemed to be very well supported and funded. So I don't know if she was sent as an agent. We're not entirely sure. So this is a very interesting beginning to all of this in April. The Romanian authorities arrested us for precisely two hours and threw it out and knew it was all garbage from the beginning. The case remained open. Nobody understood why the case remained open. My lawyer made repeated requests to close the case. They wouldn't close the case and it remained open and absolutely not legally dormant. When I was canceled, when I was deleted across all social media and canceled and lost my bank accounts, my Uber account, my Stripe account, my Gmail, absolutely everything. It literally within the same week, the case was picked back up, which was very strange. I was followed. They tried to find evidence of any kind of crime at all. They couldn't find any crimes whatsoever. They then raided my house for a second time with the intent of getting my electronics, which they got. They went through all of my electronics and they could find nothing of actual criminal intent. What they did find is my brother and I and our personal assistant, because at the time, if anyone who knows on the internet or has been around for a while will remember, my face was all over TikTok. You could not get rid of my face on TikTok. Me and my brother were explaining our strategy for how we got so big on TikTok to some friends of ours. They then said that we were forcing them to do the TikToks for our money, for our brand. They made this huge reach and said it's human trafficking because we're forcing women to make TikTok videos. Yeah, so that's the part that registered to me as strange. It started as a kid, we were told it was kidnapping, which is quite, it's very serious yeah. that somebody fled to the U.S. Embassy. This is the woman that you're talking about that you yeah. say but you're alleging has also accused seven other men. Alleging, it's 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 literally now on Twitter. You can see the file, uh, the complaint we have filed against her. Seven men she is accused of kidnapping. She's done it with seven different boyfriends who didn't buy her what she wanted. One of them killed himself. Okay, wow. So she's a, prof she's a professional. Okay, so it's very strange that she she comes over, she accuses you of kidnapping her, but then they decide not to prosecute that. But they they fed that to the media that you kidnapped someone. That she fled to the U.S. embassy. Yep. Then all of a sudden we learn that they're investigating you, and the charges then go from kidnapping to well, actually, what he was doing is a lover boy method, which we're saying is human sex trafficking, yep. and that these women didn't know what he what they were getting into they thought that he was going to marry them yeah. and actually what he wanted them to do was just to make tiktok and only fans videos yeah so the lover boy method traditionally the way it would traditionally work the reason it was criminalized and added to the criminal code is that i would be a romanian man and i would meet a romanian girl we would get married marriage is part of it i'm not married to anybody we would get married we move to a richer country you go from a poor country to a rich country let's say america you put the girl into sexual work let's say prostitution and then i'll keep all the money and i'll i'll control her or coerce her by pretending to love her that's what they're saying that's how it traditionally works mm -hmm. they've accused me of using the lover boy method because basically i was a nice person i was nice that's the thing that so most people don't understand about the law. It's so ridiculously subjective. If they want to weaponize it and use it to attack you, that's exactly what they'll do. They can accuse any man of using the lover boy method if you send nice messages on a text message. If you're like, hey, baby, how are you? So did you, <laughs> hey, did, you, you promise, nice. did you promise to marry these women? No, I didn't promise to marry anybody. What I had was girls, the two girls who were in the criminal file, asked me how to be famous on TikTok. I told them how to be famous on TikTok, and I spoke to them nicely the entire time. These two women have come out and made videos repeatedly saying, we're not victims of anything. I don't know if you've seen them. No. Okay, so, you're, so just so I back this up. The victims. The victims in the indictment. Correct. Have made videos Correct. saying we're not victims. Correct. I did not know that. It's, there, it's all over Twitter. In fact, on my, I think it's my pinned tweet, you can see the criminal case against Andrew Tate. The two victims who the DCAR are accusing me of using Loverboy Method on have made videos saying, he just told us how to do social media. We're not victims. I've never seen any of them being aggressive or rude 
They've always respected, uh, respected people. Ai fost amenințată? Nu. No. Nu. No. N-am fost niciodată. Dacă eram amenințată, automat nu mai eram idiotă să stau în casa asta. Suntem prieteni buni de 2 ani de zile, cam așa. Nu poți să mă treci pe mine ca și victimă, dar eu n-am spus că sunt o victimă. They gave this statement to the police. The police ignored it and said they're brainwashed. So they ignore it. So now we have a criminal case where we have girls who are saying they're not victims of anything. Me telling girls how to make money on TikTok, or not even how to make money, because no one makes money on TikTok, telling them how to get famous on TikTok, and them saying that I forced them for money, which doesn't exist. There's no money in the criminal file. There's no transactions. There's no financials, nothing. The girls themselves have given statements in my defense. They're being thrown away so they can continue with this case saying that I've brainwashed the women. So now we have, imagine in court, my brother and I and the two victims all on the same side saying nobody's done anything wrong. We're all friends. We were talking about TikTok accounts. Mm -hmm. And then you have the state with no witnesses on its own saying you're victims and you're bad and you're going to jail. So it seems like what they're doing then is this is where the content from 10 years ago is coming into play where they're saying, well, look, to even, yeah, they're complaining this now. So even though this, these charges are from, and I read the indictment again, 2021, We are, look at what he said 10 years ago, which somehow confirms what we're saying. We don't have to listen to these women. Yeah. So I do want you to contextualize this video that has been circulating on the internet of you talking about the lover boy method. So we'll take a look at that right now. Sure. You cannot get a girl to work for you, you have a f- So the recruitment process is the same as the PhD course. You message them on Instagram. The PhD course is my recruitment system. I don't mention webcam until after I've had sex with the girl. If you're on dates and you're trying to mention it and shit, it it just doesn't work. It puts them off. I'd never do that. That's disgusting. I'm not a whore. Uh, It's just not gonna work. You continue as normal, no mention of webcam. You f*** the girl. After you f*** the girl, you do the PhD test. If she passes the PhD test and she wants to be with you, then you start mentioning things like, Yeah, but you know, you're always busy. You're always at work. You can come work for me. Okay, so first question, when was this video taken? Yeah, so this video is from 10 years ago, and this is me explaining how having a webcam company, it's actually a larger video as a whole. I'm explaining how having a webcam company can affect your relationships and how it affects your dating life. It also explains the fact that one of the girls I was dating at the time was working on webcam at mm-hmm. the time. And it's explaining my general overall explains my life and how things are affected owning a pornography company. Because obviously a lot of women will be put off by that. It doesn't explain, it doesn't say, I'd be very careful how I answer this question because I'm currently under an investigation, right? Mm-hmm. So I'd be very careful how I answer it. People are trying to chop it up and say that it says I am using uh, the lover boy method to somehow convince women to do things they didn't want to do. This is obviously not the case. And none of this is in the case file for a reason because it doesn't exist and none of these women are upset. But this is simply me explaining, it's actually a dating course I made a long time ago. And I'm a little bit embarrassed about it, to be honest with you, because it was 10 years ago and I was talking about women and dating and things in a way that I wouldn't talk about them anymore. Right. So yeah, you look very young in the video. I'm super young and I'm talking about, hey, when you sleep with this girl or you meet that girl or you meet this girl on Instagram and I have a webcam company, I don't tell them I have a webcam company. And I just think all that's kind of crass and it's below me and I don't really like talking about it. And it's amazing how things change as you mature and you get older. But once again, I was a much younger man. I think if you were to take any 24-year-old and look at the stuff he puts on the internet, some of it's going to be stupid. And I think if you look at anybody who made things 10 years ago, some of it's going to be stupid. It's absolutely not really not criminal in any regard. There's nothing criminal about it. It has no bearing or any interest in the current case. But yeah, I was talking about how I talk. I don't mention I have a webcam business. The basic premise of the video was me explaining that I don't mention I have a webcam business ever. And that I'm Mr. Rich and I have this nice car and I go on dates with girls. And sometimes when I say I have a webcam business, some of them want money and they want to work for me. That's the basic premise of it. Right. I'm glad to hear that you're not proud of the video. And I think that that's one of those things where I say that people don't allow you to grow up from things that you've done or said in the past. And this is obviously when you were operating a webcam business, you're talking about. And, And that's the whole thing about the human experience. We're supposed to grow, right? And we're supposed to make mistakes and we're supposed to learn from them and we're supposed to, uh, evolve as people. And I'm certainly not proud of the video. When I say I'm not sorry for what I've done, I don't mean it in a, I would do the same things again. I don't mean it that way. I mean, that at the time I was a lot less knowledgeable and I was younger and I made some mistakes. And just like I'm sure Jay-Z would never crack, sell crack again. Right. Exactly the same reason I would never make a stupid video saying something so stupid again. I also could have never predicted the fact that I was going to become one of the most famous people on the planet. Right. I didn't see that coming. And if I did, I would have been a lot more careful with what I said and how I said it. 
And I do think that it's part of every person's journey to make some mistakes and learn from them and grow from them. And I kind of find it interesting that if I was a reformed drug addict, there'd be no problem. If I was a reformed murderer, there'd be no problem. If I was a mafia boss and I'd sit here and I'd killed three people and we were doing an interview and I was like, yeah, I used to kill people. I've done my time. I'm out of jail now. I get less flack than if I made a video talking about dating when I used to have a business that did webcam than I currently get, you know? So all I can do is understand that I was a younger man. I did the best I could at the time. And, uh, I was trying my very best to survive in a very harsh world. And I, I, I understand now that a lot of the way I said things, I certainly shouldn't have said them that way, but none of it is criminal. Right. And it, again, has no bearing on your case today, but I want to literally no bearing it and it's conflation is it's, being circulated yeah. without like people think that video was shot last week. Correct. And that's what's so good because it's good to mention that because people are trying to conflate them because in the current case against me, there's no case. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands there's no case. We're now in a situation where if the legal system's completely fair, then the case is over. So what they're trying to do is they're gonna conflate with old videos of mine and they're gonna try and muddy the waters and gaslight. And I will say that I am unhappy those videos exist and I will say I wish I never made them, but I won't say that I'm sorry because at the time I did the best I knew how to do. That's and I think, I think that's important I, for the young kids that are following you, especially the young men to know like I say, I always hope that they, I talk about the mistakes that I made and I, I probably wouldn't even categorize them as mistakes. It's just things that I did. And I, if I could go back, of course, I wouldn't do it hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. but it's important for them to hear that. You know, I'm not proud of that. Obviously I'm not Completely. proud of it. And, and that's why I never push them to the world. And that's why I never, you know, propagate them in any way. Unfortunately, there's a weaponized attack against me where they still exist. Mm -hmm. And that's why I do so bad. So good to talk against them. I think that if you have a if you want to tell kids not to do drugs, you usually have a reformed drug addict to stand up and say, don't do drugs. I was a drug addict. It was a mistake. And I think that gives you a degree of credibility. So for me to sit here and say, be a lot more careful, one, with the way you say things on the internet, yeah. especially. Two, be a lot more careful with your interactions with women as a whole, especially in light of the Me Too movement and all these other things. Be very respectful. This video, this is a small clip. If you watch the video in, in its entirety, I actually talk about ex extensively about how you don't want to Get, make a woman feel pressured. You don't want to pick up a rape charge for no reason. If she feels upset or sad, make sure you get her a taxi home. I talk about all these things in the same video. So this is still the worst part of a very long form video taken out of context. However, I just think there's a lot of lessons to be learned from it. And yeah, if I have to be slightly embarrassed and a little bit taken aback by them so I can teach people the lessons and I'm going to teach people the lessons. And the basic premise is I was explaining how I have a webcam company and how it affects my romantic life. And that was how it was all encompassing and went together. And I think when I made the video, I got like 28 views. Yeah. And now it's being circulated. And now it's being circulated. And I'm being told I'm the worst person in the world by people who pretended they'd never done anything wrong for the last 10 years. And also there has to be a degree of time. I like to think there's a statue of limitations. Like how long are you going to hold? They will for the rest of your career. Until I'm, I'm sure they will. And it's fine. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's just like, okay, 10 years ago, 10 years, a decade. Yeah. They're going to keep making you answer for it yeah. in every capacity. I've, I've seen that. And God forbid you misspeak. You miss a word while you're saying something. Yeah. They will circulate it over and over again. Yeah. That's just the yeah. world of social media. For me, what I feel is I don't feel guilty about them, but I do feel embarrassed because I don't feel like the way I spoke about women or the way I spoke about romantic relationships is my current view on romantic relationships. I think I've certainly matured. I was a young, brash, arrogant guy. This is what happens when you have a young kickboxer who's beating everyone up, making a bunch of money from the streets. I was a young, brash, arrogant guy, and I spoke in a way I perhaps shouldn't have spoke. And I'm sure if Jay-Z makes a song today, he won't speak about women and crack and drugs the way he used to speak about women and crack and drugs. It's just the reality of life. And you have to grow and you have to take the embarrassment which comes from growing. So I will certainly sit here and make sure, I think the whole world understands that that's not my message. That's not why I'm teaching young boys today. The young boys who are following me today have no interest in these videos and don't watch these videos unless they're pushed by haters. And I think that overall, I'm a net positive for the world. I think that men being so disenfranchised is, I want to say something quickly about the British school system. The English school system has attacked me and now they're trying to put me, they've spent billions of dollars trying to remove me from schools because young boys were running around saying, what color is your Brigatti and repeat, repeating my sayings. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can really truly be held responsible for the fact that young boys repeat a saying, especially one that's not particularly aggressive. I think that shows that the young boys are looking for a hero and someone to look up to. And I feel like I'm filling a gap. And that's why I understand it's so important. I say very good things and teach very good things. And I don't think I would have learned so much good if I hadn't been involved to a degree with the dark and the bad. I don't think there is light without dark. A lot of my lessons and a lot of the messages I give to the world come from the fact that I grew up in one of the worst areas 
of the Western world, surrounded by drug dealers, surrounded by real pimps doing real bad things, surrounded by broken homes. I learned all these lessons. And if I had never had those experiences and never grew up in that scenario, how could I be a person who's now teaching young men, disenfranchised young men, the realities of the world? How could I? We talked earlier about having a sheltered life. A sheltered life doesn't allow you to be the kind of man who can teach. So yeah, I spoke in a way I shouldn't have spoke. Yeah, I regret the video completely. Have I ever hurt anybody? No. Has any of the girls who are being mentioned in that video come forward with anything other than defense of me? No. Nobody was actually hurt. It was just very brash, very arrogant, very bad delivery, which I regret. I can tell you something right now. If uh, level with you as a human being, if I had to watch clips of me 10, year, 10, 11 years ago, I would be so I would be red. Even the black girl go red. I couldn't. I couldn't even look. Yeah. I wouldn't even want my husband to see it. So I feel your embarrassment. Well, this and, and, and this that's why I, a part of me when I was when they were regurgitating these clips, I was like, this is so unfair. It, it's so unfair and, to yeah. to say I'm upset. And by and large, the stuff that you're saying to young men, even if there are certain things I don't agree with. Although I found it interesting that you said that peacocking is natural with men, because I think you're right. Now that you say it, I'm just a woman and I don't understand it. Yeah. Um, but by and large, the stuff that you're saying today is not that. And so I just I think it's really. You, you got to be really careful if you're convicting somebody on who they were a Com decade ago. Completely. And it's reformed drug addicts that will tell you not to do drugs. And it's reformed alcoholics uh, that will tell you not, not to drink, drink. alcohol. Yeah. And, and I lived a life. I'm not going to sit here and try. And I think part of the reason, actually, and it is part of my image, you know, Top G is the name for any of the adults who are watching it. Top G is what they call me, my nickname. But part of it is the fact that I grew up in a bad area. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can fight. I have this money. I'm in this big compound in Romania with armed guards. And there's that, that degree of it. There's that nastiness and there's that rough to the edge, which makes my message so interesting for the young boys to watch. But that's because I came from a very rough life. And yeah, all I can do is apologize for the delivery, but I will not apologize for trying to do the best I could at the time we in the scenario I was in. For growing up. Completely. And I think that that's one of the things that sucks about being a public figure is every single moment that people are looking at it under a microscope. And I always say, I want to give people permission. I always say, I took the most liberal route to conservatism that there ever was. Yep. And so I just not so quick to judge people. And also I like to think, and I, this is one of the things I do say, if, if the most advanced forensic detectives on the planet with years of effort, if the worst they can drag up is me talking about women in a slightly derogatory way, I'm kind of happy with that. And I'll be honest because I scroll Twitter and I see all these liberals who attack people all day end up getting ousted for child porn or this or that real things. And I'm like, thank God I have no skeletons for real, you know? So that's the worst version of me that anybody's ever going to see. And it was a long time ago and I learned my lessons from it. And uh, I do my very best to teach the lessons I learned, just like you said, to help people avoid going through the hardest way to possibly learn a lesson. And that's that's the reality of it. But that has no bearing on my current case. And I think that's what the confusion in my case is currently. People yeah. think that my case has something to do with that, even though they're completely unrelated events. Right. And that's why I'm trying to clarify in talking to you, because I've realized that there's a lot of conflating going on. Um, and a lot of it is because America, I, I feel, is just now being sort of introduced to you, whereas in the UK, you've been around for a while. And there was one, and I'm only familiar with your UK brand because of my husband. So I, I know that you've been big in the UK circuit for a very long time. And there was an old video, video that surfaced of you spanking a woman with a belt. Yep. Tell me you love me. Say it like you mean it. <laughs> you, say it like you mean it. You message one other guy ever again, whether we're together or not. You understand me? This obviously has made it through the UK media for years. And I know, I know what that is based on my understanding of what happened with Big Brother when you yeah. were on Big Brother, but Americans are just seeing this video yeah. in a long montage of awful Andrew Tate videos. It's, so I want you to explain to them yeah, it, what that was. Sure. And again, this is another example of when the woman has already spoken out and clarified yeah. that this was not her being abused, but Absolutely. Yeah. The woman's already come forward instantly after the video. She came forward and made a video and said, look, this is between me and Andrew and it's, he never hurt me and I love him very much. And this is something that personal that happened in the bedroom. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say something about the video that has been released recently about me and my ex-boyfriend, Andrew Tate. Andrew is my still great friend. What you guys saw on the video is just what we used to do. It was just pure game. He's a great guy. He would never hurt anyone. Unless he's fighting. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to let you know that this is a huge misunderstanding because I heard he got kicked out from the house because of it, which I found very unfair. It's because it was just pure game. It's just what we used to do. 
And it's actually interesting because when I got arrested, even recently, even though me and her are no longer together, she was also doing videos in my defense. She made a very recent video a few months ago saying, once again, very nice things about me. He is not a human trafficker. He would never rape anybody, and he would certainly never ever human traffic anyone either, including his brother. They would never do such thing. I am just so shocked, and I'm so fed up with all of these lies. And you're right about public life, having your dirty laundry or your life thrown out there to the world is kind of interesting. And it's interesting how fast people throw stones because I know how clean my life is compared to most people's lives. And I know that just from conversations I've had at dinner tables. I know from just dinner table conversations. You talked earlier about dinner table conversation people have in couples, etc. I've been sitting around in very private rooms with very rich people. And I've been in very important places and also some very low places. And I've heard people talk and I'm like, if your life was on display, like my life was on display, it would be a real circus. Mm. I mean, imagine you could be the son of a president. Imagine if their life was on display and you could find out some really interesting things. So me personally, yeah, these things are the same old regurgitated things from 10 years ago that have been previously explained. That was also, I was going to say, can you date that video when that video? 20, that... 20 it, I must've been, how old was I? 2015, maybe 2014, okay. a long time ago. Right. And I think the best defense for all of these things, personally, I don't think that anybody should take my word for it. I think the best defense for all of these things are the voices of the woman directly involved. Right. We say, believe all women, right? That's what we say, isn't it? Okay, well, you don't have to listen to a word I say or believe a word I say. If you think I've done something wrong to a woman and the woman stands up and goes, no, I love him, that's garbage. The next should be the end of the issue, I believe. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm getting libertarian again. But um, No, I mean, I, I very much agree with it. And this kind of gets into, um, oh, gosh, what is the name of the guy in Hollywood that he just went under me to? And, uh, Hammer something? Yeah, Army Hammer, Yeah, right? And this is another person I defended on my show. He was in consensual relationships. They, BDSM was his thing. He was very clear that it was his thing. The girls were okay with it. Maybe, maybe because he was a Hollywood star, but he never lied. He never coerced. He never confused. And then suddenly one of these women decides to speak out against him. Now they've just cleared him of all charges. And I, I sort of have the perspective that if they were doing this in a consensual relationship, respective, irrespective of how I might examine it and say, I would never do this yeah. in a consensual relationship, you can't then turn him into a rapist. Well, this is the thing. I don't think many people understand, especially the men who are vilifying me and attacking me and anyone who's upset by me, understand that first they come for me and then they're going to come for you. They come for any man that they don't like. And the way they do it is this is the weapon. They sit and go, okay, let's take some kind of sexual crime because it's heinous and it damages their name. And then because it's subjective, right? You say rape, you're right. Rape traditionally was grab a woman off the street and hurt her. Well, he didn't do that, but he did have a consensual relationship for years and then now his girlfriend can be convinced to turn on him for a paycheck mm -hmm. because the, the media will hype her up, make her famous and pay her a wage. Now he's a rapist or even by cra more crazy extension. Let's look at the lover boy method. We have a man here who has spoken to a woman in a very nice, polite, kind way, has never even had a BDSM relationship with her, hasn't hurt her, hasn't hit her, only spoke to her nicely. She is saying he is nice. She is saying he did nothing. Okay, she's brainwashed and he used lover boy. You can't even be nice anymore. You can't even be, if the government want to put you in jail for sexual crime, you can be a man with a woman, speak to her with absolute respect. She can love you with all her heart and say he has never hurt me and you are still a criminal. Right. Right. Think, think of the, think of the mind bending. It's crazy. As a man, you're not safe. You're not safe. If they want to get you, they're going to get you. And they're going to use this avenue because this is the most heinous possible crime you can be accused of. The process itself is the punishment. Let's look at what's happened to me. All those months of investigation. During all those months of investigation, there are pages and pages of files. Everything I did, everywhere I went, they were looking for me to break a law. I don't break laws. If I had even sped in a car, if I had littered, if I had done anything, it would all be in the case file. So they're, they're spying on my entire life trying to find a crime. They can't find one. Then they go through my entire personal life, which is now all over the internet, leak it all over the internet. So you go through the embarrassment. Mm. Then they seize all your money. $15 million have taken of my money. Then I went to jail for three months. Now I'm on house arrest. By the time I'm found innocent, I've been punished. The whole, the process is the punishment. The process is the embarrassment. The process is teaching you a lesson. So it's not even about innocent and guilty. I don't think most people at home understand that if they want to hurt you, if you get to a level of influence where powerful people go, you, we have to damage this guy's name. We're going to accuse him of sexual crime. It doesn't matter if you can prove yourself innocent three years from the point they accuse you because right. you've already been wrecked. That's the entire goal of it, right? 
So now we're living here. I'm sitting here as a person who's accused of a crime. The victims are on my side. There's no one against me but the state. I've done nothing wrong. There's these Twitter detectives, Twitter internet detectives who know who funds them, trying their very best to prove me guilty for no reason by taking old videos and conflate the issue and trying to make it complicate when it doesn't need to be. And it, I just sit here and think they are complicating the issue. I, I very much agree with you on that. I think that the, the goal of digging up these old videos was to say well, that this somehow legitimizes the case against him in Romania. Yeah. And that's just not true. Right. You can say. You, you even said it. You're not proud of these videos. You can say, I think Andrew Tate is immoral. I think the things that he said here are not principled. They're trying to say that because of things that you said 10 years ago, you shouldn't have a clock you thing. young men today. It's just too much conflation. I made a pro, I made pro atheist videos back then. And I'm very embarrassed of those. Right. I'm extremely embarrassed of the videos. I would sit and say, God is not real. In fact, I'm more embarrassed of those videos than any other video. Wow. And I would sit there and now I'm, I'm devout to my religion. So I would sit there and try and talk about how God wasn't real. And I thought I was smart. And now I watch it and think I was an idiot. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of myself as a pretty wise person. I wouldn't have a platform if I wasn't wise. And I'm 36 years old, but at 25, I was a dummy. And I think that any 36 year old, if you were to ask him, were you a dummy at 25? I feel like young men, especially, take a little fully, longer to. Completely, you're mature. full of testosterone. I was making money out of Lambo. I was fighting. I was beating everyone to pieces. I had a few hot girlfriends. I thought I was Mr. Hotshot. Yeah. Like, is that the worst thing in the world? Like, who, who is it? Right. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting that they're going to attack me with these forever, and that's fine. I do believe, however, that Allah is the best of planners. And I am in many ways, I wouldn't say happy, but I feel like this whole criminal investigation is going to be a fantastic end to all of this once I'm found innocent, right. I believe. And I do believe I'll be found innocent. I've seen all of the case against me and there is no case. And it's very difficult to put somebody in jail when there's nobody saying he did anything wrong. For people at home who are confused about my criminal case, just so they understand, I'll explain it one more time. Two girls in April who visited Romania for five days, wanting money for shopping, didn't get it, accused us of kidnapping them. These are girls who've accused seven other men of kidnapping slash human trafficking. Romanian authorities turn up and within an hour said they weren't kidnapped. This is stupid and threw it away. Then they picked up this case for some reason, by some recommendation later on down the line, come up with this whole lover boy garbage. The two girls, there's four girls in the case. Two of the girls who were accused of who I've supposedly lover boy are on my side. We have the two initial girls who said that they were kidnapped who are on CCTV walking in and out of the house as much as they want. And she's accused seven other men of kidnapping. That's the case against me. So. I have enough faith in justice that it's all going to be put away pretty quickly. But um, yeah, I wish those old videos didn't exist, but much more than those, I'm far more embarrassed about old videos I made that were anti-God. I feel genuinely bad about those, much worse than that. So it's just, but that's I'm, not what you're selling to kids today. I, absolutely not. I'm doing the absolute opposite. Right. I'm trying to push children towards religion. Right. I'm trying to push kids towards God. And it's amazing that it's amazing that I'm being attacked with these videos and I'm embarrassed by them. That's fine. But I'm glad my atheistic videos didn't appear. I'd be far more embarrassed. I'd feel genuinely shameful to watch those. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're human and we make mistakes and all, all we can do is grow, like you said. Yeah. Um, trust me, I went through the conservative ringer too. Uh, the suddenly... What did they hit you with? All sorts of things. I mean, they hit me with an uh, old anti-bullying company that I was trying to put together based on something that I lived through when I was in high school. And they tried to say essentially that I was trying to dox people. I still have to answer for a splash page for an anti-bullying company that I tried to create with the most goodness in my heart. And they still throw it at me. She's a fraud. This is not what she actually thinks. I mean, I have to answer the conspiracy. Some things are even cr they're crazy. Yeah. That George is some George's father is somehow related to the Rothschild. And I, I mean, it, it gets crazy. And, and the bigger that you, the bigger your platform becomes, the more they dig into your history and they'll dig into ex boyfriends. I mean, it, it never goes away. But I. I'm hardened to the process. I am who I am. I'm proud. I actually am proud of a lot of the things that I lived through, a lot of the mistakes that I've made because it made me who I am today. It's interesting you say hardened to the process because I think I am too. Because when I watch old content of mine or things I wish I didn't do or say, I will feel guilty or I'll feel shameful or I'll feel embarrassment because of me. I don't care what people think. Mm -hmm. I don't care. If some conservative wants to watch a video and make a video, I don't, I don't care. It's about me and my own personal morals and my own personal morality and how it's evolved and how I feel about things I've done. It's all about me. It's internalized. I don't care what these people say externally because I know that nobody is perfect. And I also stick by this. And I've said it many times, but I know it absolutely not to be true. Anybody who is attacking me, if they'd been under the level of forensic assault I've been under, would have far worse things out there in the public. Right. I'm sure.
Right. And I know that there, one of the charges against you is that you're materialistic. You're describing that as peacocking. And it's funny when I see you with Lamborghinis or whatever, I don't know anything about cars, whatever the cars are. I always think of, I'm friends with a lot of UFC fighters. Yep. And um, one of the ones that I have great respect for is Colby Covington. Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because when I have my podcast, he's sort of this quiet guy, super respectful, just yeah. not at all what you're getting in the ring. Yeah. And when we talked about that, he said, you know, no one pay attention to my fights. And then suddenly I'm in Brazil. I think I'm about to get dropped. Then I start talking a bunch of trash and suddenly Completely. he's got a huge audience behind him. And this is part of the, the, the men like the bragging, the men like the peacocking. Completely. Um, and so I love it. And that's why I say when I see some of these videos and I see conservatives assigning like real meaning to you saying stuff that is just so obviously content for young boys. It's the only way I can describe it. I mean, this is just like a bunch of guys just being guys and yep. the girls just be like this is so stupid yep. that's my reaction it's so stupid but i'm why are we trying to assign real meaning to this this well, is like guys, this is how guys have fun the same way that girls sit around and talk about real housewives yeah absolutely it's bravado it's just it's girls are into my husband cannot do like five seconds of hearing me and my girlfriends talk about things he's like yep. i'm out yep and this is what when him and his guys are together and he's like they're fishing and the first catch you gotta bite the head off. i'm like that is so stupid yeah so ridiculous yeah. why do you are you biting a head off of a fish yeah. but it's just boys being boys and girls being girls completely and so i think that people should not assign like i mean i've seen really stupid videos of you and they're trying to really assess these videos as if this is like i'm like this is just what they're i call it, yeah. posting well yeah they're taking and it now you see colby he's got these hot girls in bikinis he's behind cars on his thing and i think it's hilarious and i think it's funny because it's i get it it's for it's not for me and that's not the, for me. And that's the thing, actually, which a lot of conservatives and the conservative movement don't understand is that by attacking somebody for having a little bit of fun or for, for being bravado, for having some bravado or saying something audacious or having a nice car, whatever. Bugatti, whatever. Yeah. If you're going to attack people for that, you're just going to drive young boys away from your message. And yeah. you need the youth of a message for the message to exist and survive. If you're going to just be Mr. Boring and be upset by everything, then nobody's going to want to have any affiliation with it. I really do believe the reason liberals owned the culture for so long is because liberalism overall, it looks, it's not, because when you become spiritual, you understand that it destroys your soul, but it looks fun. It does look fun. It looks fun because there's no rules. Yeah. And you can do a bunch of dumb stuff. You can take drugs, you can run around, go to orgies and watch porn and sleep with all these degenerate women and they're all promiscuous and it's a big party. It looks fun. And we talk about culture and how important it is to live when the culture. Okay, well, then I come along and I'm largely conservative minded and I have this massive fan base. And then you're going to attack me and say, Andrew has a car and that's bad. Yes, well, they're like, cares, they're like is, yeah. is that the fight you want? Yeah. Is that how you're going to win this culture I war? I very much separate myself from the conservatives that do that. I'm like, this is I, on my show. I'll show a clip. And I'm like, I can't believe this is even being passed around as something that should be taken seriously. It's so stupid. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. It's so obviously content for guys. Yeah. This is what I imagine if my husband left to his own devices and he's around all of his lab in the UK. I mean, the stuff they talk about is just so stupid. I, and, but, but then he thinks the same thing about me when I'm with all of my girls. Completely. It's so stupid. Completely. And we do need to stop being so severe. Okay, It's materialism. Okay, we get all, I get what you're trying to say, but also this is just fun content for guys. But then let's also talk about the materialism thing, right? Because it's interesting to me that conservatives will sit and say, oh, materialism is bad or it's anti-Christian, et cetera. And I understand where there might be a point to argue there. But I tell you something, if you're completely and utterly broke, then you need the government to eat then you're in a lot of trouble. Mm. We talk about the matrix and resisting the matrix. One of the tools to doing that is financial freedom. And this is one of the baseline realities of it. I'm not saying you should sell your soul for money. Absolutely not. Really not. But if you want to truly resist the matrix as a whole, you need to have money to do it. It's pretty hard to do when you're broke. Mm. Even me as a person, if I had no money, the current situation I'm in would absolutely not really destroy me. I, I would be completely and utterly wrecked. Like, how could I pay my bills? I've taken $15 million of my money. I'm locked in my house. So you need to have a degree of financial freedom. Otherwise, you're going to end up just doing what you have to do to eat. You look at these people in England. There was a video that recently was on Twitter. I felt really sad when I saw it. It was a workman taking down the British flag and putting up the pride flag. And someone shouted at him, hey, bro, you're moving, you're removing the wrong flag. And he goes, I know, mate. I know. You're taking the wrong flag down, mate. At least you know that. But he had to pay the bills. He has to feed his family. What can he do? He's a flag hole. He's a flag hanger. All he can do is hang the flags. If he doesn't do it, someone else will do it. He loses his job. So if you're completely and utterly reliant on a wage or you have no money, well, now you have a new tool of enslavement. COVID was all based around that. Ah, oh, I just got to go to work. Ah, oh, I just get the injection. Ah, oh, I got to wear the mask. I got to fly. I got to work. Got to work. Got to work. It, it takes a lot of money to sit down and say, no, I'm too principled. That takes money to do. So it's also interesting that conservatives want to attack materialism. Okay, perhaps I didn't have to buy a fancy car. You can get upset about that if you like. But 
if you're not financially free, it's also pretty difficult to stand up and tell the truth. Even if you make a lot of money, if you're reliant on, let's say, a sports team for a contract, even if you make a lot of money, if you don't have enough saved, you can't tell the truth. Even if you're rich, they're all still complying and bending because they have a contract they're adhering to. It's difficult. So I don't think that if you had somebody who was trying to inspire the masculine youth of tomorrow to resist a slave mind, teaching them to be financially free would be a bad thing. Like I think it would actually be a good thing. I think men need it because they think view it as aspirational and no one escapes it. I would definitely not describe my husband as materialistic at all. He likes cars. There's just something about cars that men like. Absolutely. I, I, my son, truck, 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 car. It's like, it's psychotic. I mean, it's, his, it's such a boy. Every time he sees a truck, a car, any car that looks cool, he's two. Yeah. He's two. So there is something ingrained in men that Completely. His, his first word was truck. You know, every time a garbage truck goes by anything, he's just like a school bus. Men like that for whatever re Boys like that. Men like that. It's and I don't think we need to overthink it. Yeah, absolutely. It's aspirational. But also, if we're going to actually look at the meta point, I believe that teaching financial freedom, I think teaching financial freedom is one of the very important ways you teach people to resist a slave mind. I don't think you can resist a slave mind if you're completely and utterly broke on welfare or living paycheck to paycheck for a large corp, which is insistent on trying to install the slave programming inside of your head. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very difficult. I actually think financial freedom is a key component to it. And I think that me standing up and showing a life that costs $50 million a year or something ridiculous, doing that on purpose and trying to inspire men to make as much money as possible is actually a very key component to the resistance to the slave mind. I don't think many people understand this because if you teach young men how to go out there and become rich as possible, it's very difficult they can do that without learning some degree of mental fortitude, mm -hmm. without learning how to speak to people, without learning how to network, without learning how to be competent and disciplined and motivated and work hard. And then they do all that, they have enough money so that when someone comes along and says, take this injection, they'll say, no, I don't want to take the injection. I'd rather miss the flight. So there is a key component of resistance without, which actually involves materialism. Mm -hmm. I'll argue that if I was exactly the same person with the same viewpoints, but I was completely and utterly flat broke, I wouldn't be able to make the same impact on the world. And I wouldn't be able to resist the programming the same because I need to eat food. So I'd actually counter argue any conservative who's complaining about my beautiful car collection of 42, not one, 42 nice cars, that having a lot of money is actually an important way to resist the matrix. I can only talk from personal experience, but the number of times, especially during COVID, for example, where I managed to not have to comply with any of the laws simply because I was loaded, it was, I can't even name one, I, on tw 10 hands. So materialism is important. I think we should be teaching, especially the young boys, especially people who understand who want to live in a very rational world, who want to live in a world which is based on common sense and dignity and honor and respect and all the things we're trying to teach through conservatism is that if they don't have a degree of fin financial stability or financial independence, they're going to end up getting wrecked anyway. They're going to work for wo woke corp. And Woke Corp's going to change its Twitter picture or X picture, whatever it's called now, to a pride flag, and they're going to be screwed anyway. So you have to be teaching to a degree financial independence. I don't know why that's seen as a bad thing. I'd actually really like to argue that point with who was complaining about my car? I think <laughs> who was complaining about my was one of, of my 42 cars? I think it was a packaged you know, this video and kind of showing that you're not actually good for young men. And they wonder why, and they wonder why they lose the culture war. Imagine sitting there telling young men, don't have a nice car like him. Don't be fun like him. Don't do that. Like, what plan are you people on? I no one have a sense of humor. Like, I think Colby Covington's Instagram is hilarious. Completely. I know this is not how he lives. Like, first off, to be an MMA fighter, his whole life is diet, extra. I mean, Correct. he's beating his body every day. He Correct. doesn't really have time to be going to the strip club. And, yeah. you know, but I, I get the brand. I think it's hysterical. He's actually a really wonderful human being. And I'm I'm happy that I'm not so serious that I don't see the humor in this. And, that, and boys love it. They do. They do love it. It's. And I wonder if these people really don't see the humor or if they're just is so desperate to find an attack vector that yeah. they're just going to get know. upset by question. jokes. I think that's a good question. I think, but I will actually, I want to get to what your belief in is in terms of when you start talking about the matrix, because I will say I, some of the people that have been going after you, Liz Wheeler obviously has been one of them. Who? Um, Liz Wheeler has been one of them. I think you Who? blocked her. <laughs> um, Ali Stucky has talked a lot about it. I know these young women, they're not a part of the matrix, okay? I have a lot of disagreements with them. Stylistically, we have disagreements. Allie's a, uh, is a, means what she says. Even if I disagree with her point, I know she means what she said. It's not an act for her. She's not trying to do anything. She says it because she believes it. I've known her for years. She's actually been very good to me when people were very, the, the, the guard of conservatism. Allie had me on her show. She had a platform for me. Liz genuinely believes everything that she's saying. I don't think she's a part of the matrix, even if I think that there are some pieces of it 
of your life and why people gravitate towards you that she doesn't fully understand. And maybe she never will understand it. But they, to me, are not a part of the matrix. Okay, so... So let's talk about what the matrix is sure. and what the matrix isn't. Sure, let's talk about the matrix. Before we, that, before we do that, let's talk about this recent conservative attack. I want to make it clear that I don't watch basically any of the attack videos made on me. I'm, I'm busy and I'm very happy with my life and I don't allow attacks on my psyche. If somebody makes a video that attacks me, I don't watch it. I don't watch it because I don't want to watch it because I don't care. I don't watch them either. I don't care. Yeah. And I don't say this to insult Liz or anyone else. I don't know them enough or respect them enough to give a shit what they made or what they say. I don't care. So I can't talk about the specifics of what she said because I don't know what she said because I didn't watch it. However, I don't believe it was well-intentioned. I think that there is certainly a degree of jealousy that came with my massive influence and the number of views I got on the Tucker Carlson show. I think that the fact that 10-year-old videos, which have been debunked 30 times are now coming up again, is not well-intentioned at all. But I can't be entirely and utterly sure of that. So I can't comment specifically on their attacks because I haven't watched their attacks. I don't. I think they're seeing those videos for the first time. That's why I said I'm trying to bridge the gap between I only knew about those videos for a long time because I've been paying attention to, to yeah. your UK career. Yeah. I don't believe these people have been. I think the first time they were introduced to you was on Tucker Carlson's interview. Yeah. If I'm guessing, I have not spoken to them, but I'm so they're just seeing this. Then somebody starts circulating old clips and they are like, oh my God, this person, this must be true. Again, guessing, have not spoken to them about you at all. Got it. Well, it's up to them to come to their own conclusions about me. I'll live my life and I'll continue to live my fantastic life and I'll be the best person I can be. And they can come to their own conclusions. And they can make videos in support of me or attacking me for the rest of human time. I'm not going to watch any of it. I'm not interested. Right. So that's those two. But um, in regards to the Matrix as a whole, the Matrix, I believe, and I use the term the Matrix from the movie because I think it perfectly describes the world we're in today. I believe we're living in a false reality which is projected inside of our minds and it's designed to distract us long enough for our bodies to be abused. And the movie is from body heat in the real world, perhaps is for some physical labor, but I believe that we're not living in a real version of reality. I believe there are gatekeepers on the truth, the agents who try their very best to keep us asleep. And I think the end goal is to keep us distracted long enough for our body to be utilized and then for us to die. Who is the matrix and what is the matrix as a whole? I have to be very careful what I say and I don't want to get in too much trouble, but I think anybody who is perspicacious enough to understand how the world works understands that the media machine is trying very hard to keep us convinced to keep us convinced of certain ideas and also to keep us arguing about very unimportant ideas so people behind the media machine who decide what goes on the news can do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. and those the things they do usually have dire consequences to all of our lives right. so i would say that the matrix as a whole is the media machine from the projection point of view and that the people who control the media try very hard to make sure they have ultimate control over all governments and all ch important decisions on the planet i agree I, to I totally agree. I, Welcome I, to the conspiracy. I talk, well, no, I Welcome to the it. conspiracy. No, I don't listen to my podcast. I'm in on like CIA documents, like showing people this is not, it's not a conspiracy. <laughs> These are declassified CIA documents. These are things that they actually did and that nobody pays attention to because it happened 60 years ago, but it's been declassified. You know, uh, all the operations that they had, putting actual journalists under CIA pay. I mean, it's crazy following the death of JFK. Why did they do that? Why did they suddenly feel it was necessary to have journalists on payroll following the death of a president? Yeah. Uh, who there were a lot of questions surrounding his death. So you're you've got the right audience with me. When in terms of that, I think I think the media is the enemy of the American people. Yeah. That is why I, I I liked Trump calling that out right away, talking about fake news. What I don't understand is why anybody listens to anything they say. I know it is because they've been caught lying so many times. Mm -hmm. Is it just because they lie on repeat over and over again to the point where people just accept it? Is it because it's cowardice and accepting that these people constantly lie to you makes you adopt a worldview, which is scary because you have to now think for yourself? I'm not sure what it is, but how after, especially the last five to six years, especially the last five to six years, can you believe a word these people say to you? Well, because if they say it enough, it becomes true. And that's been, they, they've been able to show that, that if you say something over and over again to someone, they will accept it as a truth. And that was another uh, declassified CIA experiment. It was super interesting. They put a bunch of people in the room. So let's say there's 20 people in a room, right? And 19 of them are agents. And one of them is actually the person they're testing. And they show you a picture of what is clearly a banana. Yeah. And they go around the room. The last person they get to is the one that's the, being experimented on. Everyone else is an yeah. agent. And they say, what is this? And the first person says, apple. Apple. It's clearly a banana. Yeah. By the time they get to that 19th person who is not an agent, that person just says, 
it's an a- it's an apple, even though it's clearly a banana. They, they don't even believe their own eyes anymore because they're going, okay, well, if 18 people in this room have said that it's an apple, what do you see? An apple, apple, apple. Then they just say apple. So they, there's a lot of evidence. They do it because it works. And, and everything around us shows you it works. We're right now debating whether or not you know, children can pick their gender. How did we get here? This is this is something that you couldn't even fathom when we were in high school that people would be saying like your little boy could be a little girl, but we're here today and actual adults are believing this information because it's been said enough times to whatever segment of the population that they're accepting it as true. So they do it because it's been effective. And that's why God is so important because God is a hard line that you cannot be crossed, that's right? That's why you will not be libertarian. That's why I'll not be libertarian. You will not be libertarian. That's right. No, but if you have, if you, if you, yeah, it's true because if you have faith, then there's rights and wrongs, like you said earlier, there's sin and there's good, and there's a line that can't be crossed, and the PSYOP is very difficult to penetrate. And that's mm-hmm. why in the Islamic world, for example, we have very little of these problems, because it's haram. Problem solved. <laughs> haram. <laughs> Next. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's certainly scary, and I don't think people understand how evil absolute power will make a person. I don't think people understand how petty and how vindictive and how degenerate absolute power will make people. I think there's a degree of naivety in the population when you talk about the matrix and the people who are behind the media and they believe these people might be powerful people or rich people, but not necessarily bad people. But unfortunately, I don't think they really truly understand the reality. I had a theory that I was arguing with somebody with, and I keep using COVID because it's a perfect example of the PSYOP. Everybody who once believed in COVID now no longer believes, mostly all of them, which I find actually remarkable. Because when I talk about COVID now in front of 20 people, everyone's like, yeah, man, that was garbage. But during COVID, I couldn't find a single person who wouldn't wear the mask. I was like, oh, I'm by myself. I got arrested in Germany. Me and Tristan got arrested, surrounded by mask wearers, handcuffs. I'm like, what the? And I guarantee if I was standing in front of those people now, they'd all be like, yeah, COVID was stupid. It's it's amazing how people want to flip and forget reality. So I use COVID because people were fully psyoped and now they're not psyoped. And I'm trying to wake you people up to understand something about how garbage it all is. I'm trying my very best to make people understand that the people who make the news have no interest in you being informed. Mm. Why would they make the news and broadcast it to you everywhere for you, little Mr. Nobody, to understand how the world works? Why would they care about you knowing anything that's important ever? We're not a slave if, you, if you're knowledgeable. And that's why I always say, go back to when we had physical slavery in America, a requirement to maintain that was ensuring that slaves didn't learn how to read. That was part of the slave code. They weren't allowed to learn how to read. And if you were caught teaching a slave how to read, you you too, as a, a master, would would be, fall victim, right? And that it was so important for them because they know that an educated mind can't be enslaved. Absolutely. So the goal of the mainstream media is to keep people stupid. And it is why I think that despite the fact that you admittedly say that you are not a conservative and despite the fact that I don't think you're overtly political, none of that really matters. I think what matters now is what you will do with the platform that you have, what impact you will have. Completely. And inspiring people to free think and to not believe all the slave programming which is told to them and to not just follow lockstep with the lies that are given to them, I think in and of itself makes you a conservative and to a degree makes you political. Unfortunately, now that's how the divide exists. If you're teaching people to think for themselves and be strong people of agency and self-respect, then you're going to be on one side of the political spectrum. And if you're t- teaching people to be the absolute opposite, you're going to be on the other side. And by extension, I guess I am political and I am conservative just because I'm telling men to stand up and to be strong and to think for themselves. And that makes you resist the slave programming. And I like to believe that the conservatives themselves have resisted the slave programming the most. Um, but yeah, it's it's a scary world we're now living in where things that I'm saying, which were basically completely accepted by the entire population 15 years ago, are enough to make me the most hated man in the world. But isn't that crazy? I think the things I'm saying are things that were widely accepted for a very long period of human time. I think they're the things that are still widely accepted in most of the world today. I think it's the decadence of the West that allow us to pretend these ideas and these realities don't exist. And I don't know how long we're going to last under this false reality. I don't know how long society can possibly function with the insanity that they're trying to purport on the population of the West. The fact that so many calories in the Western world, genuine calories from food and human time is wasted discussing pronouns and trying to get somebody's pronouns correct in a sentence that they've made up, which change at random. Think of the absolute insanity of that. And how long can a society actually function with that degree of decadence and absolute asinine behavior? I don't know how long it can even function anymore. I think the West is in a lot of trouble and it's almost like, especially certain talking points, and I find myself guilty of it as well. We talk about certain talking points which are pushed to the front and I kind of feel like they are a mass distraction. They have to be because they're so ridiculous. But the problem is 
people, there's a certain percentage of the population that genuinely believe them. I would love to live in a world where they try and push the idea that a man is a woman or that a man can change to a woman and then compete in women's sports without an advantage. I would love for them to try and push that idea and for everybody to go, this is stupid. Next. No. But because some people believe, we have to now waste our time discussing and debunking the most obvious, hello, water is wet. We have to sit here and talk about the sky being blue for days and weeks and years almost at a time. Talk about the ultimate distraction tool by the Matrix for them to sit there and go, you know what? Let's come up with some absolute garbage and let's throw it to the front and the smart people will fight against it, but enough dummies will disagree with it and that will keep them distracted while we do something that matters. And we find my, I even find myself falling victim to it because it's so necessary because a certain subsect of the population is so dumb that they believe it. If people were all just a little bit less receptive to the slave programming, everyone would stand up and say, no, you're going to try harder than that next. And we could discuss something that actually matters. And this is the point I was going to say earlier about COVID. So COVID, I think a lot of people do not understand how petty and vindictive power can genuinely make somebody. And I had an argument with a friend of my brother about two or three years ago during COVID when you had to wear a mask when you went in the restaurant and then you sat down, you took it off and then you ate and you put it back on to go to the toilet and you took it off. And I said, I hope you understand there is someone somewhere, some billionaire on a yacht who is doing this as a compliance exercise, as a joke. I know. As a joke. And he goes, why would you do all that just for a joke? Because if you're in charge of the entire world and you have unlimited money, what's going to make you happy? A Ferrari? You've had Ferraris your whole life. Boring. All that you care about is power, compliance. It's all funny to you. It's vindictive. It's petty. Why not? You're in charge. For the same reason, if you're in charge of a big company, you're like, you know, I want you all in at 8.45 tomorrow. Why not? It's a power play. Ego, status, respect. All the things we're talking about earlier. These people are born into massive influence. Money doesn't make them uh, feel powerful. They've never worked for anything in their lives. Now they have a little bit of control over you. They're going to make you do some dumb <laughs> so they can laugh at you. I'm telling you, it was thing. a joke. I say I say the same thing. I'm like, there's no way they're not just playing like Simon says to see if we can they can actually make 100%. people abide by these things and people keep actually abiding by them. There's no way that they're not sitting back laughing. It's a joke. It, they, they must be laughing because it's, it's, it's so preposterous. And people don't understand that there are people in the world who have power, who are literally vindictive enough to just mess with the entire populace for a joke. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people understand when you look at the matrix as a whole and yeah, you talk about the media machine and how it's trying to push these ideas on you and the people behind it. The people behind it do not have any kind of genuine intention. Mm -hmm. Their intentions are absolutely and utterly selfish. They want to feel good and feel powerful no matter what it takes. Or they might have some sexual perversion. They want more transsexuals in the world and then they decide to just create them. Who knows? Like they just want less men. Or less the men. The only thing that can stand up to evil is, is, is strong men. So Absolutely. That, so however they have to do it, whether they have to push homosexuality, whether they have to push people literally making themselves eunuchs by going into the doctor and saying, chop off my penis, I don't want it anymore. But that if they have to make women believe that they can be men where we can't, it all becomes a joke when there actually is a war, you realize we were never going to be able to fill that void. I, I think it is, it is a, a, attack on masculinity, which is why I do believe that raising up strong men is the number one requirement is this, in society right now. Is this Darwinism, do you think? Well, is there a Darwinist? And that's a good question. Is, is it? Is I mean, it, I'm just, I, and the reason is, is because I actually truly respect you, Candace. You're very smart. You're very smart. And often I sit on podcasts and I just talk, 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 but I want to actually get some feedback. If you walk into a doctor and say, please chop. I can't even say it. You know what I was saying? Get rid of it. Please affirm my mind. Please. I watched the Disney Channel. Please. Is this Darwinism? I, well, I, don't I do know. say in the end we win, right? Because you're not, they're not going to be able to procreate these ideas, so to speak, right? But that's why they need your children. That's what's so scary. That's right. why, because that's why they're so intent on getting the kids. Because right. for any idea to, to exist in the future, you need the next generation. Mm -hmm. And also children are the most susceptible. And it's kind of evil and scary that these people have a worldview, which is so logically flawed. It's so devoid of genuine rationale that they have to go to the most susceptible subsect of the population to inject it. Which is they why you should get married, because the guard against that is strong families. Is it? It is a nuclear family. It is a mom and a dad sitting around the dinner table saying, what did you learn at school? It'd say it's mom guarding at home, going through their homework and seeing what they're learning and saying, absolutely not. And it's dad going to work, building, and that nuclear family is the only guard against handing over your children to the government, which is why in the next five years, I just think you should get married. The only guard except Islam.
What, no. I don't have to worry about my children's homework. Thank you very much. It's all handled by God. And it's interesting you said that, though. It is a good point. And I think Matt Walsh actually said something about me having, uh, I have children from a few different women. I don't like to give details on it. But uh, so does Elon Musk. And I do think, although this may be elitist, I will state here that at a certain level of finance, it's not the same crime as it would be if I was a traditionally financed individual. I can afford two or three families and I can afford to see them all. And I can afford to go to three countries in a single day on my jet if I need to. And I'm a very good father to all my children. I love them very much. And you're right. I completely agree with you. The nuclear family is the answer. My solution is not the solution for everyone, but the nuclear fancy family is the answer. I agree with you. But uh, Islam is also an answer. Well, I don't know enough about the Islamic faith to be able to counter you on that point. But I do think that it, having all your children around the dinner table, brother, sister, rival, this is beautiful. The rib, well. it's, it's beautiful. Of course. I want that for you. Of course. It's, so. beautiful. it's beautiful as well. Okay. But... Sorry, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I have to, we talk about Darwinism. I'll ask you another question because I'm very interested. Do you think abortion is Dar Darwinism? It's, it's an argument that can be made, right? Killing off your own offspring, it means that you're, you're not putting your offspring into but like, you, These society. people with the sign, yeah. I killed 10 of my kids. It's, isn't that, I mean, it's evil. It's yeah. satanic. It shouldn't happen. I'm not saying that it's a good thing. I'm just asking, is there a Darwinistic element to all of this that when i look at there that the earth will be populated with conservatives because their ideas i mean my husband always says the left is a death cult if you look at all of their ideas they lead to death right they Literally. you can't procreate you're killing off your own offspring every single one of their ideas leads to death and destruction it's unbelievable yep. so in the end you'd have to have the perspective that conservatives went naturally because we're talking about if we own the culture yeah but we don't so what they're doing is they're they're using the culture to sigh off enough young children who are not living a traditionalistic life, or like you're saying, or not having a strong family, nu uh, nuclear family to keep them against the slave programming. And they're using them to create the new generation of death cultists to continue to keep humanity under attack. But I don't know. I, I really struggle. As a person, I try my very best to, my father had a saying, which I use, I allow manipulation to find out where my enemy wants me to go. And then I use my mind to break the trap and punish the perpetrator. And the reason he said that was because if you don't allow them to manipulate you, you don't know exactly where they want you to go. Mm -hmm. If they try to manipulate you and you absolutely not resist, you might end up taking another path towards the same destination. So you should allow them to manipulate you. Watch the slave programming, watch the propaganda, watch all of it. Find out what you want, them, what they want you to believe. And then you can use your mind to instantly break the trap. I did it in COVID. And when I first watched COVID, when I watched the, the Italian hospitals and people falling over in China, at the very, very beginning of it, I sat there and thought, what do they want me to believe? They want me to be scared of this disease. They want me to be afraid. No, I'm not going to be afraid. So if I'm not afraid, what's the answer? Well, the answer is to go to which country? Sweden's open. Nobody talks about the fact that Sweden was open the whole time, never closed ever. I mean, Tristan were in nightclubs the entire time people were locked in their houses. Nobody talks about this. It's like no one mentions it anymore. But you have to use your mind to break the trap. And I feel like I've tried to allow my mind to be psyoped into this transgender stuff or this abortion stuff. And even I can't even pretend to buy into it. I can't see how you can reach that level of delusion. And that's where I say, maybe it must be Darwinism because maybe even with all of my mental capacity, I can't even pretend to be stupid enough to want to go and chop my genitalia off to then imitate a woman, poorly imitate a woman for the rest of my human years. That literally sounds like a form of torture. That sounds like one of the worst worst existences ever. I feel sorry for anyone who's fallen for that yeah. because they're never going to be what they want to be ever. It's just, it's just like the worst possible existence. I just can't think of anything possibly worse. And I don't know, maybe there's a Darwinistic element to all of these things. If we can just control the culture and make sure that no future children are psyoped into the death cult, maybe it should all fall apart because people who truly are that susceptible, me and my brother have a joke in the house. There's flies and mosquitoes in the house sometimes. Every time one of us kills a fly, we say, you've improved the gene pool because the slow one got killed. <laughs> the fast one, he doesn't get killed. So the fast one's going to be here forever. I want to think about that every time I kill a fly. Every time you kill a fly, you're, you're helping them get quicker. If, you didn't, if we didn't kill flies all these millions of years, they would never be so elusive. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe there's a Darwinistic element. Maybe I'm just trying to feel better about maybe, this. Yeah, maybe they're, they're, they're so evil they've decided we're going to kill off all of the people that are stupid. I... I don't know. And then we'll be left with just strong, independent, but then they, they can't control the strong, independent people. So then you, you kind of, you got, you got a bit of a problem there. I've got another question for you. How polarized do you think the world is? Do you think there's two teams? Do you think the globalists control everything? Do you think there's three or four teams? What do you think about that? I think it's probably now divided into two teams. Yeah. 
because now you have to find more in common. It's like, how crazy are you? We may have been divided into four, five, six, but now it's like, do you believe that children should chop their off, right? Or yes, yes or no, circle yes or no, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. That's where we're at, because you have to be so far deluded to believe this. And if you're just in some realm of sanity, we probably have enough in common that we should fight together, right? Just because like they're going after the kids now. It's like, and I think that is really where we got divided into two categories where it's like, you're either pro going after the children or you're against going after the children. And it's remarkable how many people are pro letting them go after the children. It's, it's, it's kind of scary, but that's where we're at. I think it's now pretty much two camps. It used to be more. I think so also. And then within you, obviously there's little battles and, and, and to me they're meaningless. Yep. I think maybe I'm saying that because I'm a mom and now, so there's nothing more important to me than protecting children and worrying about what my children are going to face. I'm going to be the crazy mom when my kids are at school. I will be there every single day looking over every, Amazing. every assignment. Amazing. Leaning fully into the feminine role Amazing. of like, yeah. So I, but I, I do think now it's come down to two camps. It's crazy and not crazy. I wonder what the future of the world is, Candace. I feel like I know everything and I talk like I know everything, but I'm actually starting to think things are getting Your dad strange. might've had an idea. Yeah, I wish he was still around, yeah. but things are starting to get very, very strange. And yeah, and I, I guess also when we're talking about me, my libertarianism versus conservatism, I never, like I would never allow my child to be aborted ever. I do think it's heinous and disgusting, but I will be honest with you. When I see people trying that hard to kill their kids, I'm kind of like, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, maybe that's the libertarianism in me. Maybe, I don't know, but I'm just like, there's got to be a Darwinistic element to some of these things. I don't think they should happen. I would love to stop them all. I believe that all life is precious. I think it's heinous. I don't think that anyone should chop off any of their body parts either, but it does get to a point where it's just like, if you're that desperate to damage your own life and damage yourself am i the person who's going to fight for you i don't know well these women are broken and they're brainwashed and i like to think that if they hear the right message something in the same way that i think a lot of broken men heard you say something and it woke something up inside of them Very true i think that they can land on my message and they can hear it and go wait a second that thing that was killed inside of me systematically from the school system and made me think that what it meant to be a woman was to be a whore because yep. that's kind of the message yep. that's going out right now to be a whore yep. and hate children yep. which is the opposite of what it means to be a woman Agreed. then when they hear something and i talk about how aspirational family is and something is or how much i love being a mother and yep. it, and then i think inside of them this something spiritual happens where they go wait a second i think that's actually what i am yep. I, i've been conditioned to believe i'm this but actually this is what i am so i'm i'm more hopeful that the more that we have better pillars in society that we have people speaking out on the opposite messaging that Hollywood is bringing on the, on the glory of being a woman, on the beautiful of the yin and the yang, on w that submission in a marriage is not a bad thing. Actually, it's a beautiful thing. I agree. And these messages have been perverted that where we make a difference. And I think we, we know we're winning. No, we are. Now they want censorship. Now yeah. they want the people taken off the internet. Now they want this person to go down and Absolutely. that they weren't doing that when they were winning. They didn't care. We were allowed, everybody was allowed to have a platform when Obama was president. Completely true. <laughs> we are winning. And I just think it's an unfortunate of the human condition that people don't really like to learn lessons the easy way. They have to learn them the very hard way. And it's very difficult for us to sometimes sit and tell people the truth and even and they just don't want to learn it until it's too late. I like to think that these women who hold up these, I lost 10 babies, I killed 10 baby signs, will one day wake up and feel very sad about what they've done. Yeah. And they will definitely- And it's possible. Right? And it's possible. And I think even time will show them, God will show them with time. I don't know how I'd talk someone out of the transgender argument. Like, how would you convince someone who is 100% certain they want to mutilate their body to not mutilate their body? I don't, that's a scary one to me because their mind- And that's also one that you can't really undo, which I think is sad, which is why the suicide rates go up after transitioning, I think, is once you do it, it you've committed. But I've seen, I've sat down with a, a man that did that, had the full surgery. His name is Walt Heyer, and he's, he's dedicated the rest of his life to waking up other- uh, well, That's the most noble thing you can do. Yeah. He's like, you know, this is what I did. I, this is how I was convinced. This is how I was brainwashed. This is what happened to me. I was actually just molested when I was a kid. And I just wanted to get rid of my identity in any capacity. So I did the most extreme thing that I could possibly do. I platform those individuals. And I think that he's he runs a not-for-profit now, which, you know, sex change regret. There's many people that are like him out there. And yeah, it, it, it's going to take God. It's going to take spiritualism. And it's going to take repurposing your entire life after you do something that extreme. Hopefully just us having this conversation prevents people from making those sorts of very serious decisions. And, you know, but this is why YouTube will try to censor this conversation. Oh, right? I mean, that's the whole point. Is My face, my face is on it. You're in trouble. So. <laughs>
I'm going to ask you a few more questions if you don't mind. My face is troubled too. I would just like to state. Yeah, of course, of course it is. <laughs> Why do you think marriage has reduced in the Western world? Why do you think less people are getting married than before? Conditioning. It's all about social conditioning and it's about uh, the feminist messaging. Going back to the, our conversation about the matriarchy, they've totally conditioned women to believe that marriage is a trap that you were going to be unhappy, that you were going to be sacrificing your freedom. When in reality, I got more freedom than I ever had when I became married yeah. because I, I finally became a secure woman. Yeah. I knew what my purpose in life was when I had children. Yeah. Everything else is so stupid and meaningless. How could you think you were going to find your purpose at the bottom of a Red Bull vodka at One Oak, Candace? You know what I mean? <laughs> How could you think that? Well, because that's what that's what Hollywood told me. That's what I, I saw on MTV. Yeah. And I thought that was all aspiration. I look at those women, I think they're miserable. I look at these people, that women that are, uh, are still finding their freedom. I say, find the number one feminist that you know and ask yourself a question. Do you think she's happy? Completely. Chasing her career. Do you think Chelsea Handler's happy? Never. Right? And the answer is no. And so I'm I'm lucky that I got that wake up call. I'm blessed that I got married. I'm blessed that I have you know three children now with, with this one on the way. And the more that I can talk about how happy and fulfilled I am for the first time in my life, right? Not when I was drinking and pretending to be happy, but for the first time I actually am happy. And I got those things by finally realizing that the message that those things were going to constrain me was utterly false and was meant to put me down a path of misery. Do you think, why do you think men are not getting married? That's women. Do you think men have something to do with it? As Same well? thing. I think, well, first and foremost, I think, and I speak out on this, women are not desirable right now. Everyone's a Kim Kardashian clone. I asked you earlier, what, what don't men want? And you said promiscuity. Well, that seems about the only thing that's being offered right now. <laughs> right? I, when I open my Instagram and I've got butt cheeks and I'm going, people are like, I don't understand why no one wants to, this woman's been married four times. I'm like, well, I can, I can understand it because even if men think they want it in the short term, when you see a girl, she's half naked, she looks good. Yeah, sure. You probably do want to have sex with her. I bet yeah. you're wired that way. You're yeah. hardwired wired that way. Yeah. But then what happens after you after you have sex with her and you realize that so did 20 other dudes 100%. in the same week, you don't want her. You nailed it. You yeah. absolutely not nailed it. And this is where it's so, we're in such a difficult, it's a race to the bottom with, between the two genders, right? Yeah. As the women act worse, the men act worse men act by worse. extension. Yeah. <laughs> because if you're going to be moral in an immoral world, you're going to end up wrecked. Right. So it's getting harder and harder. So we have to kind of like fix one of the genders first. Women, and, women aren't desirable right now as in the Western hemisphere as a whole. Um, and of course, there finding a wife is hard. Finding a wife is hard. And it's because women are literally being conditioned to behave like sluts. Completely. And they're also being conditioned to leave the man as soon as things get difficult. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of programming in this. I don't think even many people pick up on, but women are conditioned to act a certain way before marriage, but also during marriage, men and women are conditioned differently. If you have a man who's been married for 10 or 15 years, and let's say he doesn't sleep with his woman anymore, and he goes on TV and says, me and my woman have been married for 15 years, we no longer have sex, I'm not satisfied, I should leave. Everyone will say to him, no, you can't leave. You can't leave her just because she won't have sex with you. Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Stick by your woman. She has an emotional problem, etc." If you had a woman who said, I've been married for 15 years, I've been with him, I'm not attracted anymore, I don't have sex with him anymore. You deserve freedom. You can go get someone else. Why are you putting up with this? You, his, his feelings aren't your responsibility. So it's actually very interesting. Also, the psyop happens post-marriage. Women are also attacked post-marriage to not try, not stick around, not worry well, about their husband's marriage, needs. Speaking to your point, I, I, one thing I speak to the young women that follow me about is making an effort after you get married. This idea, I, I was reading this ridiculous column, Ask Jane where a guy was writing in or in, in earnest saying, you know, I love my wife. She's a wonderful uh, mother to our children. We've been married. Uh, she had one child two, two years later. She gained 50 pounds and hasn't lost it. Yeah. And the Jane wrote back to him and yelled at him for saying, he's like, he's like, I'm not attracted to her anymore. Yeah. I don't want to. Her. Just yelled at him for even saying this. And I'm going, no, this is the, why are you yelling at him for being honest? The idea that marriage is a finish line is problematic. Yep. That, oh, well, I got the guy. I pretended that I like to work out and go to the gym. And now that I've got him, I'm going to gain 200 pounds and he's just stuck with me. Yeah. That is a poisonous mentality. You should make an effort for your husband. Uh, part of That's part of marriage is caring about each other, caring about each other's health. Health is wealth. So it's even that is toxicity to say to a woman, well, to say to a man, well, you just have to like her anyways if she's 300 pounds and doesn't care anymore and sits on the couch all day. That That's not what marriage is really about. Completely agree. And I think everything in life is rented. I don't think anything is ever owned. I think that your health is rented and you have to pay the rent every day and right. your marriage is rented and you have to work on your marriage every day and your business is rented and 
Everything you have is rented. I think the idea that even owning anything or anything is a finish line is wrong. Right. You don't just start a company and go, okay, I'm rich now. No, you got to work on that company every day. It's rented. You don't just get in shape and go, I'm in shape now. It's done. No, it's, absolutely everything's the same and a relationship is, is exactly the same. And I completely agree with you. I think that the breakdown of the nuclear family and the breakdown of marriage in the West is actually one of the ills and one of the big problems with it. I am not married myself, so I'm not being completely, I don't want to come across as hypocritical, but. I do think that is actually a, a fast way to a degree to solve society, a lot of problems in society. I do think, though, in the current setup of society, I think the reason a lot of men are also rejecting marriage is, one, because there's not many wives to find. But two, I think a lot of men find themselves very unhappy in marriage because the women have no interest at all in satisfying them, like you said. There are no interest at all in, in their needs. And they end up scared of divorcing her because they're going to be bankrupt in a marriage where they don't feel respected kids don't listen to them and they're not the king of their own household. So what would be the attraction in getting married unless you're going to be the king of your own household? And that can be extrapolated and discussed in two different ways. One about feminine sub uh, submissiveness, but also in about masculine accountability and excellence. Because I think if you're truly an excellent man, you can be the king of any household. So right. it's very interesting. It's kind of interesting how all arguments come back to almost the same base biological things. And you teach women to be good women, you teach men to be good men, and everything kind of works out after that. And if you break those two things, everything built on top of it completely degrades and breaks down. Because even all the other things we've discussed, we discussed how masculinity would have prevented a lot of the COVID crisis. We can talk about how genuine masculinity or a good nuclear family and anti-propagandist uh, dinner table can prevent a lot of this transgender insanity. There's a whole so many things can be fixed with a man being a man and a woman being a woman. It's like the it's ultimate biology, cure. Is what yeah. I always say, and it's so natural defining the roles in the household. So like me, my husband had to sit down, and it it just was. I had a natural proclivity to do certain things. Yeah. I, I always give the greatest example: the, when a baby is born, the men don't know what to do for the first. You, you just need your your girls. You know, the, they they just are. What do I do? And I remember like every thinking about every diaper size transitioning what clothes he needed what onesies all of the stuff george not there right not there i think it, georgie must have been that's my son's name georgie must have been two months old and i said something to i don't even what i said to george but i had realized that george had already opened his college account truck like yeah. things that i when i tell you my brain yep. was no i was just like where are you? Yep. Where are I'm sitting here thinking about the day to day. He's thinking about his future. 100%. I, I don't even know when I would have. I think still to this day, Georgie's now two and a half. I still would not have opened an account for him. It just is not where my brain was. 100%. And so I just, I love telling that story because it just speaks to how different. I, I'm like, did you try to feed him? He's like, I don't know why he's crying. I'm like, have you tried giving him food? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I've already sorted out this. His bank account did us when he turns 18. So I'm like, where are you? Yeah. Men and women are different. It's beautiful. Those differences are beautiful. Completely. The sex, sex differences are a beautiful, thing our our instincts are beautiful yep. and we need to stop shunning them in this society I, I love being a woman i love that my husband's a man we shouldn't be making someone feel badly about being a woman we shouldn't make someone feel badly about being a man well absolutely and i if if i had to be pessimistic about why they're doing it pessimistic and also very realistic they want to cause absolute chaos and confusion because during chaos and confusion you can implement anything of course slavery then, it's slavery right people will give up their freedom for only one thing and that's safety. Mm -hmm. So they have to inject chaos and they have to inject confusion and they want us confused at every level. At every base level, they want you confused. They want you confused about why your kid doesn't listen to you, why your marriage doesn't work, why you're broke, why they want you confused from the ground all the way up. So you're just confused. So when they come along with some sort of solution, no matter what garbage it is, you end up just adopting it because you're sick and you need a medicine. So absolutely, they attack masculinity and femininity because it works so perfectly together. And if they can break that, they can break all of society by extension. And I think they've done a pretty good job of doing exactly that. And it's amazing if you look at these ideas we discuss and how ridiculous they are and how I feel like it's a psyop to even convince me to waste my time convincing people that a man is not a woman. It's done on purpose because they have the world so confused now that they can come at us with absolute garbage and it needs a discussion. If we had the basis of masculinity and femininity in the household, how much harder would the transgender argument be to implement? Think about it. Well, she's a woman, I'm a man. No. But now they've got people thinking we're all the same. It doesn't matter. Gender is not real. All this craziness because of the breakdown of the basics. So this is why perhaps they see you as such a threat and they see me as such a threat and they see us as such a threat because we've just stuck to the age old adages and the age old ways that people have always been. And I do think that one of the reasons why they dislike me so much is because 
yeah, I, I certainly live a teenage boy's dream. But if you want to inspire the next generation, how else are you going to do it, right? You have to have the fancy car and the big yacht and all these things. And, and by inspiring these men to stand up and think for themselves and resist the slave mind, it's doing genuine damage to their slave agenda. Genuine damage to their slave agenda. And I think that that's why I especially ended up targeted. I truly believe that's what's happening. I think there is an element of it that it's you, you've captivated young men, and that is a very important demographic in order to sustain um, an enslaved population. Is you, you need to poison men, and I think that that is true. So, in closing, other than the fact that we've agreed that you're going to get married in the next five years, sure, <laughs> I get four wives. <laughs> no, no, not four wives, just one monogamous relationship. Okay. What does Andrew Tate's life look like in the next five years? You've you've built your audience, did it with your own grit and determination. There are people following you. I hope that if there's anything I leave you with, it's that in those moments when you are sitting across with someone like Adam 22, you remember that there's the 12 year old and the 13 year old boy that is gonna be watching you. And I think you did a good job, by the way. I think you said that you didn't like it and that was important enough. But what is what does the next five years look like for you? Yeah, I want to do my absolute best. I I had someone say to me the other day that I'm the richest man in the world, and not because of my finances, but because I actually have people whose lives I save and help. And I get a lot of people out there who genuinely feel a lot better because of me. And I try my very best to tell the truth and live true to my heart. And I I live with my brother and I've got a lovely family and I feel like I've got everything almost ticked off. And my plans for the future are primarily to continue to tell the truth. I think that we're now winning. I think there's been a pendulum that swung and people are tired of insanity and they're tired of being lied to. I like the idea of young boys who follow me just doing even one of the tenants I teach. If you want to just work hard in the gym and become a fantastic financial, uh, physical condition, or if you want to get financially secure, just one of the tenants I teach can genuinely improve people's lives. I like the idea of that. And I want to have 10 sons. And I need to make sure that all 10 are Andrew Tate, four, five, six, I'm the third, seven, eight, nine, all the way up. And I have to make sure that the next generation are being produced and they have to be strong enough to deal with a Romanian jail cell and deal with a matrix attack. (laughs) So it's going to be a very difficult upbringing. And I'm going to make sure that I'm very dedicated and focused on creating the next generation of super soldiers to resist enslavement. So my plans for the future are pretty simple. I'm going to continue to tell the truth. I'm going to live true to myself, true to God. I really appreciate the audience he's given me. And I know that I have a massive responsibility. It makes me a better person. I'm going to be the best person I know how to be. And I'm going to have 10 Andrew Tates. That's my goal. That's the plan. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. If you thought one Andrew Tate was bad, you've got 10 more coming at you in the near future. Andrew, thank you so much for taking all of this thank time. You. Such a good conversation. Thank you. <laughs>